So if you're in a question about uh, anything, then you can ask lecture or whatever. <clears throat> testing. 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 Can you hear me? Good. Anyone have a question? Yeah, feel free to ask right now before the uh, class starts. Yes. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. 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 你換張相給他就可以了<笑> 啊, and you can hear me? No. Good. <clears throat> so we start the class in one minute time.
I guess I should start. Uh, so just a uh, gentle reminder about the, uh, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Hi, is it working or not? Oh, I think my mic doesn't work. Oh, oh, sorry. I think the mic is our battery. I just changed the new one. Uh, hi, uh, I think uh, the battery is not charged. I think I have to stand here for half an hour before I use the uh, wireless mic. So sorry, I just stand there. Um, so the first thing I want to mention is that homework one is already there. So it would be uh, the deadline is already there. Will be uh, I think it's uh, a Sunday. Okay. But it should be, uh, this one should be relatively straightforward. So basically, uh, what I ask is to, uh, first question is just give you data of six, cal ask you to calculate the uh, basic thing. Uh, we want to do it. Uh, what I want is, of course, this thing, if you use Excel, it's just done, then you're doomed, you're done, right? So what I really want you to is to understand using your calculator or whatever method by hand to try to understand how you derive the answer. Okay, so uh, that's why I try to say without your software, at least we try to work out. Yes. Uh, you can just write or just type. Just write is fine. Just if you want to write a picture, that's okay. Or type or type it. Just the thing is like it's now it's pandemic. So I don't think the TA have said don't want to handle the paper. So we just take a picture and send, and it should be should be all right. If it's not clear, the TA will contact you. So it shouldn't be a big issue. Uh, the second question will be similar, but just asking you to do covariance and correlation coefficient. So just try to show your step means uh, try to show some intermediate step. Uh, the standard way you can imagine, maybe look at the textbook or uh, how I do it in uh, in the slides or you can do other, it doesn't really matter. I mean, just as long as you just try to show some steps, okay? And the third question and the fourth question basically asking you to uh, write the formula, Excel formula, our formula for the, uh, for the basic uh, descriptive statistics. And if you, if you uh, pay attention to the class, then it shouldn't be any issue. So there's nothing tricky there, okay? So everything, I think everything can be fine. In, the answer can be fine in the lecture slides I have, but if in case it's not enough, then you can look at lecture notes, but uh, I think lecture slides will be sufficient. Or you can look at a textbook, but otherwise uh, uh, the first assignment should be uh, relatively straightforward. Okay. Um, the second thing I want to mention again is to uh, uh, indicate your test time preference because we decide which one to pick. Uh, this is the go to the Google form and fill in. Uh, and if you have legitimate reason, uh, such that conflict with other classes and other exam, then we will arrange uh, a makeup for you. Uh, the makeup time is uncertain right now uh, because you need to coordinate everyone who can't make it. Okay. Remember, you only can make up a uh, only if you list them a reason and you have to uh, let me know in advance, okay? Um, so this is the second thing. Uh, next thing is uh, also just to uh, mention again a little bit is uh, uh, is the data cam. Uh, so probably uh, 
some of you may notice uh, that announcement data cam. Uh, the data cam is um, uh, a uh, a website that allow you to uh, learn uh, our Python, SQL, many data related software. And uh, we're lucky that, I mean, they sponsor us. So that's why it means that we use, we need not to pay. Uh, it's only cost like uh, 30 US dollar per month. So uh, they generously give us a six month for free member. So you can go there, you can learn whatever you like. Uh, because I don't want to make pressure to you. So uh, uh, at the current stage, I don't have any uh, 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 use their homework function. So not this year, maybe next year. No, I mean, I do not impose, want to impose that, but uh, maybe next year I want to say, uh, do homework there because that's where we use the homework function. You watch a video, you work it out. Uh, it's better. I think it's a very good way to learn especially our, but otherwise, uh, just if you like, you do, you don't like, you don't, but uh, highly recommend it. Uh, so do note that, I mean, this, uh, the membership is, I think, until the March or April next year. So you still have a lot of time even after the class. So you can use it for the, uh, the class after work. Um, so that's all the, I mean, uh, I guess I want to talk a little bit more about the, uh, uh uh the 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 lecture so that's today we'll go on to con talk about probability but uh first let me spend uh try the last five minutes to review what we have done so in the uh in the first topic we talk about descriptive statistics uh which basically said uh we are trying to figure out the way to summarize data as you see the homework right so that's a uh Central tendency, which mean median mode. We have this person, uh, range, intercontinental range, variance, uh, standard deviation, coefficient variation. We have shapes, kurtosis, and skewness. And then we talk about relationship, uh, which is uh, correlation, coefficient, and variance. So these are all data. So in topic two, that we are going to departure from the data, uh, we are going to the uh, what we call the field probability. So it's the uh, slightly unrated data. Uh, and uh, we are making some modeling, okay, mathematical modeling, but uh, you later you can see that how you come up with this model actually from the data, okay? For example, if you want to estimate the probability that suppose your insurance company, you need to estimate how to price your product and you need to estimate how likely the accident is, then how can you estimate is look at historical data, right? If you look at the life insurance, you look at the people called life table, right? Depends on whether you're smoking, depend on your male or female, and those kind of things will tell you what would be your expected life, right? What's likely that you got a uh, disease, then, uh, the, then this is all probability, okay? And, uh, and the reason, and remember why we want to study probability is because of uh, the fact that uh, we are talking about statistics, which means that you collect data, which are then, but the data is not representing the whole subject we want to study, right? Just study part of it. So we, everything we collect from the data is actually in what probability, okay? So that is why we start the probability, okay? But let's get started with uh, what probability. But before we start, uh, any question? Uh, if no, then we talk about how we define probability. And always when we start probability, we always start with random experiment. And what is random experiment? Random experiment is uh, something you can see is, uh, we know what kind of outcome it can be, but uh, we don't know which one is going to come, okay? And potentially, classically, you can repeat many times, okay? If you only appear once, then uh, it's very difficult to estimate probability. Okay, you can make some subject subjective uh, estimation, but it's uh, very difficult to make any conjecture. Okay, so a classical example you can see in many textbooks is they thought toss a coin and roll it die because uh, you can potentially win many times or die, right? And uh, toss a coin many many times, so you have some idea. Okay, 
and um, outcome okay would be the term would be the what you would see in the random experiment right in the case of toes and corn you have two possible outcome which is head or tail you roll a six face die the possible outcome are one two three four five six okay so it's a repeat random experiment is something uh we are going to there's something is going to happen but we don't know which one but we have an idea what might be the outcomes okay what are the outcomes we know okay so that is a very important assumption there is uh it's not something completely unknown okay it's something we know what are the possible outcome but we just don't know which one will come okay and uh the outcome is of course the uh is the uh possibility from the uh random experiment and the next thing is uh event um event is just basically a group of outcomes okay if you just have a toxic a uh, toxic con you have head and tail so uh event is not very useful uh but when you talk about wrong it die which is uh, have six outcomes but sometimes you want to say even number outcomes right uh then the two four six is the event right so you're combining different outcomes is an event and uh you go to casino uh you will see that many types of event that can make money right suppose you just go to the uh dice wrong a die right you have free dice uh right if you have a uh, all the free die are the same number right it's an event Right, that you can make money, right? Be one, 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 two, 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 three, 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 four, 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 five, 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 six, 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 right? And if the number is below, I think nine, right? Below nine, then it's a kind of small, right? Above nine, then will be big, right? And uh, so on and so forth, right? So the, that's why you group uh, many outcomes, they call event, okay? And the last thing we want to talk about is sample space. And as we said, the random experiment is we know what are all possible outcomes. So the event that contains all possible outcome is called sample space, right? Because we know everything. So it's just like uh, toes and con is a head or tail, and die is one, two, five, five, six. There's nothing deep, but just a terminology. So before we end, just repeat what it is. It's random experiment is uh, something we want to do, but we don't know which one will come out. And everything there is called sample space. And uh, in sample space, there's a, any single element that's called uh, outcome. And uh, you combine a bunch of outcome is called uh, event. Okay. So why we all do this is because that is a classical definition of probability. Okay. It comes from the idea of random experiment. Okay. It, what he said is suppose you can repeat things many, 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 many times. Okay. And the num the then the probability will be defined as fraction where the denominator is how many number of the times you do the experiment okay and the numerator will be the number of outcome that favorable that event okay so suppose you consider that you told the coin million times okay if a coin is fair you expect roughly half of, half of them is uh, tail half of them is head right so the ratio that means uh, the total number of random experiment denominator here is 1 million, right? Uh, then the numerator, uh, if you consider the event that is a tail, right? And we said half of them is a tail, so it's half a million. Half a million over 1 million is uh, half. So probability of tail is half, similar for head. Right, because you have one million down there and then you have a million in the numerator so it's just a, a half a million over one is half okay so this very classical definition i suspect that most of you have learned in the high school so there's nothing new there except some new terminology there okay so this is what we call law and frequency okay but i hope you know it already so just uh, a very brief review on bring a fair die okay an outcome is uh, one, okay? And two, four, two, three, four, five, six also outcomes, okay? And what a sample space is collect all the outcomes, which is the set. Uh, in, in terms of set, we write it in the curly bracket, okay? It's one, two, three, four, five, six, okay? It's got a set of outcomes. And even numbers is uh, just uh, a 
set that contains all uh, even outcomes, okay, which is two, four, six, right? All number will be one, three, five, and large number will be a, a four, five, six. If you have small number, it can be one, two, three. Okay, I'll just define it. You can define your own way, okay? You can define it not very small number, can be two, three, four, five, six. Okay, it's just the way you combine. Uh, as you can notice, uh, because you just count each outcome, right? Uh, because uh, it's just a fair die, okay? So we just count the number, which is a probability of even, odd, or large will be just uh, how many of them is just six, right? And how many in this uh, EOL is just three of them. So it's three over six, it's one, of, it's one half. So uh, pretty trivial, uh, but I hope that it's not. So if you are going to put it in what we call the Venn diagram, okay? So this is a very useful way in the, from the set theory that you will see uh, what you will see the whole sample space with S, you okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, okay? And this is the uh, odd number is one, three, five, even number is two, four, six, okay? And large is four, uh, five, uh, four, five, six. Okay, so, so this diagram will be uh, useful. Uh, later you can see uh, when we talk about uh, two slides later, operation set, okay? And uh, later you will see this slide again. So um, now what we want to talk about next is to getting more difficult. By running one die is not maybe fun enough. Okay, it's too simple. So let's consider the case where we roll die twice. Okay, roll die twice. Then what's the outcome there? Okay, outcome must be considered as uh, things, the outcome that you can, outcomes will be considered as what you observe when you the uh, the cases have the uh, the two numbers in the two row, okay? So you have uh, usually in this case in, in mathematics you repair you represent it by pairs of integer, okay? Uh, why and the pair means actually means all the pair, okay? Because the uh, first entry and the second entry are different thing, okay? So you need to have a pair entry. Uh, that's why when you talk about pair entry, we use a bracket instead of curly bracket. So the first entry will be number of first die. The second entry will be the number of second row. So one, two, and two one are different outcomes. Okay. And the sample space would then be, uh, would be a 36. Uh, you'll be one, 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 two, one, three, one, four, one, five, one, six, two, one, two, three, two, four, two, five, two, six, so on and so forth until six, six. So it will be uh, 36 of them, okay? Uh, why 36 is just like you can list a row and column, okay? Six of in the row, six in the column, six times six is 36, okay? And the one natural question you asked, like the event will be more complicated, like uh, some of the two dice will be less than four, okay? In that case, uh, we will have three outcomes. Because it's one one, two one, uh, one two, only three. Okay, when you're two two, then you're done. You can, it's, it's four, right? So the probability that uh, this event will happen, it'll be three over thirty six, right? Because thirty six in total, there are three of them, so it's uh, one over twelve. Okay, so that is. Uh, I hope that is not too difficult. But before we continue, any question? I suggest. Uh, I suspect that you have learned in high school, so there's nothing new here, except some, probably you see some new terminology and the, the current backhead and the, all those kind of things. But other than that, I hope that it's not nothing new there. Is that okay? I hope I didn't go too slow, but, uh, uh, or too fast. I hope it's a good speed. Um, so the next, next question is about the, uh, 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 so the next one is about operation on set. Okay, um, why I care? Why I care about this? Um, is because uh, we often we talk about intersection 
union and complement of set. We are talking about, say, when we will see an even rolling die, when we will see even numbers and also a big numbers. Okay, we usually combine thing, right? Maybe even number or big number, right? Or when you when we will not see something happen, right? So these three are all standard operations. Uh, we will call intersection, union, and complement. But that is a standard way we talk about logics. Okay, intersection means and uh, is similar to when you the case finding some call uh, highest common factor or common factor. And union is like the U there. You say union is like or, okay? And complement means not, but probably you would be uh, uh, not too easy. I mean, intersection means common, union means on all, uh, complement means not, okay? But anyway, let's see the uh, example, then you have some better idea, okay? We have one, two, three, four, five, six. Even is two, four, six, and odd is one, three, five. Large is four, five, six, okay? Intersection means find all the common element, okay? Look at E and L, okay? The common element are four and six, okay? Because four appear in E and L. Uh, two and five is not, right? Because two and five is only appear once in the own respective set. And O and L have only common element five, so that's why it's O and L. O intersect L is five. Okay, and union, uh, U union L means that we copy everything from E and L, okay? So it's two, four, five, six, okay? O and L is uh, one, three, four, five, six, okay? Up that's okay. And complement will be things not in the set, but in the sample space. Complement of E is things that in the S, but not in E. So you just take away two, four, six, you get one three five, which is odd number, okay? And uh, last number, the complement will be, you take away four, five, six, right? From uh, the sample space S, right? It's large complement, okay? So that is the idea. And uh, just to give you some uh, feeling of what intersect is just the overlapping area. Suppose you draw, you draw the Venn diagram there, uh, you have, uh, Two, four, six, five. Actually, the outside should be that should be one, three, right? As you see in this old diagram, one three is in the outside, but we don't draw it to just focus on E and L, okay? And in that case, um, uh, the intersection, okay, uh, like the cap, we call cap. Uh, here, uh, you can see it's overlapping area, okay, and well, union that basically includes everything, okay? Union will be two, four, five, six, okay? And the complement will be something that is not inside. So complement with the green area, okay? E will be two, four, six. The complement will be not is inside, it's one, three, five, okay? So is there any question? Any question? No. Now we're going to finish the last definition. Okay. And then you will see why we go through all this because we need to define probability that are based on axiom, based on assumption, without relying on any what we call natural experiment. Okay. So that will be, we'll talk, we'll talk about more than definition of uh, probability. Okay. So we will be talking about the last three definitions. First is what is mutual exclusive event? Mutual exclusive event is uh, they can happen at the same time. Okay, so um, which means that we define as the the union. Sorry, the intersect is empty set is nothing. Okay, so what might be the mutual exclusive event is you are in the new Asia College. Okay, and you are in the uh, United College. Okay, it cannot happen at the same time, uh, physically. Right, so either in Hong Kong Island, Kowloon Peninsula, or New Territory, three of them are mutually exclusive event. Right, they cannot happen at the same time. Either one is correct. Okay, cannot be both. Okay, so the second one is called exhaustive event. Exhaustive means that uh, 
the union of them is the sample space. Okay, so um, suppose we know that we are in Hong Kong now. Okay, so you are in Hong Kong Island, Kowloon Peninsula, and New Territory. Three of them are exhaustive. Okay, you cannot must be in one area. All right, so cannot be cannot be outside. Right. So they are, that means that the union is the uh, sample space, okay? Now let's combine the first and the second one, okay? Mutual exclusive and exhaustive event, okay? I'll just re remind you, re exhaustive is, uh, in English, it's just that use up everything. So that's why it, it exhausts the sample space. So there's nothing left there, okay? And we have a mutual exclusive exhaustive event means that they're partition of the sample space. What does that mean? It means that uh, you just cut the sample space into different region and you must be one of the region must be true. Okay. And actually the example I give is I cut geographically uh, Hong Kong Island, Kowloon Peninsula and New Territory are mutually exclusive. Right. Um, so actually the way I do, I cut it into geographical area uh, it's a mutual exclusive and exhaustive is a partition, okay? And just to remind you that that formal definition of partition is just uh, if they are mutual exclusive and exhaustive, just means that uh, for any part, they cannot happen at the same time, okay? And, and they all add up to the sample space, okay? So remember this idea, uh, ex ex mutual exclusive, okay? and exhaustive and they, what they combine, uh, why we need that uh, later immediately we see, okay? Before we talk about that, let's go to the example. The example we have uh, is the sample space. S is again, rolling a die, one, two, three, four, five, six, and even number, odd number. And we also have a new set, it's called prime number, uh, which is uh, P is two, five, two, three, five, prime number. And B is, uh, I just make up, it's just four and six. You can imagine it's a big even number, okay? And here you can see O and B are mutually exclusive, okay? Because either you have O or you have B. You cannot have O and B at the same time. Only one of them is true, okay? But need not both of them are true because it can be six, then O and B are false, okay? So mutual exclusive means, this, means that they cannot happen at the same time, Okay, but it can, it can be both of them not happening, okay? And collective exhaustive means that uh, one of them must be happening, okay? O, P, and B uh, include everything in the sample space, okay? So it, at least one of them can be happening. It also can be two of them can be happening. Say, oh, when you have number three is coming out, so, O and P auto happens, okay? So that's why it just means that uh, collective exhaustion means at least one of them is true, but doesn't imply only one of them is true, okay? But here you have uh, E and O are mutually exclusive and uh, exhaustive, which means that uh, only one of them is true and it has to be one of them is true, okay? So in this case, you can see E and O are the sample space. The interset O is empty set. So that is a partition, okay? Because it must be either E or O is true, okay? And cannot both of them are true, okay? And cannot both of them are false. So that's the idea. Is that okay? If everything is all right, then we go to the most important thing uh, is to define probability because that is uh, the modern way to define. We don't rely on anything about a random experiment, okay? We just define probability by itself from the idea of set. So uh, for those who are more advanced, actually probability, uh, the meaning of probability is a measure for a set. Okay, it's a function mapping from set to a real number. But anyway, we, we don't go into that complicated thing. It means that we just give an outcome. It's just like, for every outcome, uh, or for the course outcome, the event, we give some number, okay? 
and the number would fit what we want to want to fit. Okay, so let's start with the first axiom or first assumption we have is for any event. Okay, event means the, the collection of outcomes. Okay, means that we will give a number between zero and one. Okay, so that's the first assumption is no matter what outcome you give me, a cross outcome you give me, okay, even event you give me, it must be between zero and one. Okay, that's assumption because uh, this, this is not very really, uh, demanding assumption because it's just normalized, okay? The biggest set you give me will be one as expect, all right? So that's naturally go to the second axiom, okay? If you say you give me everything in a set, the sample space, there must be one, okay? That means that we have all the knowledge about what's going to happen, okay? Actually, our idea of random experiment, right? Random experiment is mean that we know what are the outcomes. We just don't know which one is potentially possible or more likely or which one to come out, right? So that is the second thing. Okay, let's repeat the idea. The first one is normalization. So we just, you give an event, I give a number. The number must be between zero and one. No negative, no more than one. Okay, fair. Second one means that we know everything. So it means that uh, if you give me everything there, I know you must one thing must be coming out from there, right? Because sample space by definition is, uh, is exhaustive, right? So it must happen. So it means that you give me the, the biggest thing you give, I, big, I give the biggest number, which is one. Okay, that's nothing new, okay? The last one is the most, I think is the most natural, okay? But of course, it's also a big assumption there. Okay, it's what we call sometimes we call add additive. Okay, because actually we are talking about probability measuring how likely something will happen, right? We want that if they are mutually exclusive, then we can do addition. We can combine part of it, right? Just like those wearing a die. Okay, if you have sex number, okay. If you are asking what's probability that either one or two might happen, okay? One and two are mutually exclusive, right? It must be adding the probability of one plus probability of two, right? So it will be unnatural if you think that they are not adding them up is not same as the, uh, the union. Okay, let me repeat the argument there. You are talking about one, two, three, four, five, six, and the six outcome are mutually exclusive, okay? And just focus on number one, number two, okay? You're asking what's probability one and two will happen, okay? And the, the, the axiom three at three set is this will be same as you look at two things separately, okay? Look at the probability one and probability two. The two add up will be same as you're talking about one and two. Okay, so that is the idea. Okay, and if you can think if it's more than or less than, that will be very weird way. Okay, so that's a, I think that's a minimum rational requirement. Okay, you should able to do addition. Okay, if you cannot do addition, then what, I mean, it's very difficult to handle things. Okay, so what is required here is if they're mutually exclusive, okay, which means that they do not intersect. Okay, then it's very natural you say, this is event A, okay? It's a union of all because that's what our collection is. Just same as the summation, just adding up, okay? We give example what it is, but what you give example, we just run it, run it die, okay? But then let's see, uh, we have example, okay? So do note that here I don't require uh, each outcome to be equally likely, unlike the classical, uh, usually the classical probability, right? Each outcome is equally likely. But here I relax a lot, uh, and you will see based on this is the uh, modern way to define probability is we don't talk about random experiment. We just start from a bunch of outcomes and each outcome we give uh, a number. Okay, you give me any combination of outcome, this is a number. And as long as this is a internal consistent, it's prob probability. So it doesn't rely on the real world. Okay, so this uh, definition is invented in the, hundreds ago, I think by Russian mathematician called Komogorov. So that's why it's a, what we call the Komogorov axiomatic definition. But anyway, uh, let's 
see an example, okay? So the example here is uh, we have sample space one, two, three, four, five, six, okay? And the axiom Q said uh, the probability of the sample space is one, okay? So the whole thing is one. And axiom three said uh, you can, because these, each outcome by definition actually is, it means uh, mutually exclusive, okay? Probability of S is equal to one up to six, okay? And the next thing is consider the case we have a fair die, okay? When you're fair die, which means that every possible outcome are the same, okay? In that case, you can derive, right? You can solve, this is one, this is all the same thing. So everything will be one six, okay? And you can ask what's probability of axiom, again, axiom three, probability of even event, Will be probability of two, four, six. Okay. Okay. And each of them is one, six. So it's three, six. Okay. So just remember now we don't, we really don't rely on the ratio. Okay. We rely on uh, the axiom to derive. Okay. With some condition, here we assume that uh, the die is fair. So that's why one, six. Right. So you can have an assumption the die is unfair. Okay, and you give some condition, then uh, basically you get some constraint, you solve some system equation, then you can get everything there. Okay, you can, you can freely assign any number to any probability. As long as they satisfy axiom one, two, three, then this, we, we have a probability. Okay, so it's a very flexible framework. And this is the framework that help us to prove many things. Okay. And, um, this is technical, so if you understand, 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 it's fine. So, so far we talk about, in this case, we have a final number of outcomes, okay? Final number means we can count them, one, two, three, four, five, okay? And technically, if you care about mathematics, uh, what happens when you have infinity, okay? And the axiom said, actually you need to go to infinity. Is need, we need to still need that hole, okay? So for finite, I think no one will complain about that. But when you go to infinity, this one is a little bit trickier, okay? And the reason actually we need to have a infinity for this to hold is because we talk about, later talk about continuous random variable. And all time and living is con top of finance, numbers, data are actually continuous, okay? And that's why we actually need that. But for the purpose of our, we just, Stay it because we do it because the axiom we don't really prove it, right? We just believe that it's true and that's it. Okay, we don't ask why. Okay, just like the constitution, the basic law, we don't ask why the basic law, basic law, basic law, just law. Just there, everything's derived from there. Okay, and of course, there's a, some good reason why this is a good axiom rather than the other one. Uh, but uh, this is not our concern. This is the the modern way to do it. Okay, so the to see the power of the axiomatic definition, okay? Let's see the complement rule, okay? So probably you have learned that in your uh, high school already, but it shows that the X, everything we derive can be derived from the uh, uh, axiom that we have, okay? So let's define uh, AC to be the complement of A, okay? And complement by definition is, an a and A complement by definition are mutually exclusive and is exhaustive, right? Because A is itself and what is A complement means that what is not in A, right? And it's all in the sample space, okay? So A and A complement is mutually exclusive and exhaustive, okay? That means that by axiom, the sum of them, A union A, and a complement is the sample space. So this means that some of them is one, okay? And axiom free that you can consider the union as a sum. So that's why uh, you have this function, okay? The probability of A actually plus the probability of A complement will be equal to one, right? So in that case, that's why we have this, 
Okay, so let's see the example. And you may ask why we care about this is because uh, sometimes when you calculate, okay, I will be here after the break, okay? I think the battery will charge. Um, so uh, let's see the example, okay? The reason why we need this rule to calculate because sometimes to calculate the direct way will be very hard, okay? It's very complicated. So it's better to through the indirect way to look at the complement, okay? So look at this question, okay? And I think this is a, I choose a rather simple one, okay? What is the probability that uh, rho it died the face value is less than six, okay? Uh, you can actually count how many number is less than six. You can count one, two, three, four, five, okay? And if a fair die, then will be uh, uh, one, five over six, okay? But sometimes it's easier to look at the way around, okay? The event is less than six, okay? It's a big thing, but its complement is rather small. The complement is just six. Okay, and the fair die when you have six is just one six, so one minus one six is five over six. Then you're done. Okay, so that's why uh, later you will see when you have very complicated uh, event you want to calculate, sometimes easier to uh, look at the complement. Okay, so let's go back to here. The question is like this. Okay, and. If you want to look at uh, what is inside, it's sometimes very difficult, but look at the outside, you tackle the problem from the other perspective, look at the outside, just only way single, then it's much easier, okay? Of course, in this case, only one, but sometimes multiple, but anyway, uh, I hope you get what I'm saying, okay? <clears throat> and, um, The next one is uh, actually what we call uh, a technical part is uh, partitions, okay? So which means that uh, again, partition again is mutually exclusive exhaust event. So the sample space is divided into N part, A1 of the AN, okay? Each, is the, each of them is mutually exclusive and collective exhaustive. Just remember the example we have is, you have Hong Kong Island, Kowloon Peninsula, and new territory, okay? Suppose you're in Hong Kong, the samples are in Hong Kong, right? You cannot run away now these days. So either you're one of them, okay? Uh, cannot be both of them, and at least one of them is true, okay? So in that case, you can talk about is, uh, because the sample space must be one, so sum of all these events up to one, okay? So why this is useful, okay? Let's see the example, okay? It's no different from what we observe here, okay? Same as this one, but uh, but this is also, uh, we go into the uh, axiom free to derive it, right? Because it's basically directly from axiom free. So um, suppose instead of rolling a con, rolling a, sorry, rolling a die once, we have a more complicated rolling a die twice, okay? The question is, what is the probability that having some of the two dice is less than 11, okay? So we start to panic because there are many, right? It'd be uh, one, 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 two, one, two, one, right? One, three, three, one, then so on and so forth. And then how to count less than 11, that is, look, looks like a uh, tedious task. It's not difficult, but you need to count many of them, okay? So the easiest thing to think is, instead of considering the cases, uh, from the original uh, uh, outcomes, you consider partition by the total sum, okay? Uh, the minimum you can see is two, the maximum is 12, okay? You can have, regardless of outcome, some of them is two, is one partition, okay? Some of them is three, is one partition. Some of them is four, is the other partition, okay? So that's why you have a, uh, 11 different events, okay? And you can see them virtual exclusive, right? If you get some of them is 11, cannot be some of them as well, okay? They are mutually exclusive, and this is the exhaustive because the biggest you can get is 12, the smallest you can get is two, is two, okay? 
And in that case, you can easily see that uh, uh, the probability of uh, A11 is two over 36, why? Uh, because either it's five, six or six, five, you get 11, right? And to get A12, we only have one case is six and six, it's one over 36, okay? So that means that uh, the union of these two is three over 36, okay? And you're asking, the question is less than 11, right? Which means there is two up to 10, okay? Uh, because it's union of this, let's say, they're also mutually exclusive, so that's why the sum of them. But it's just like the difference, okay? It's one minus this two, is means that 11 over uh, 12, okay? Any question? I guess uh, it's time to break of uh, 15 minutes. We'll resume at 
fuck with it.
Um, hi. Can you hear me? Is it? Can you hear me? Yes. So uh, now happy to have uh, the wireless back. Um, so let's uh, really briefly talk about what we have covered uh, in the first part. So it's a uh, probability. So we start from the very classical definition of probability where it's a ratio. Uh, the denominator is total number uh, of event and the uh, numerator is a number of outcome favorable to event. Okay, so when you talk about number, it actually means that uh, kind of like the, uh, you can actually repeat the experiment, right? And, uh, and repeat many, many, many times is not very, uh, it's not very clear what it means, right? So we have the more exact definition. Uh, the exact definition is starting from the, uh, this X, three axioms of uh, probability where it says that maybe P because so important. The first one basically said uh, probability must be, be between two and one. Okay, that's the first thing. The second thing said the, uh, the biggest one you can give must be one. Okay, you give me the whole sample space, it must be one. The last one actually gives some structure, okay, is if a event, okay, contain many mutually exclusive outcome, right? So basically the probability event will be sum of all different parts. Okay, so that's what it says. Okay, you can sum of the parts will be same as its whole. Okay, so that is what it means. Okay. Or a whole thing, you can cut into different pieces. Probability of all these pieces sum up will be the whole, whole part. So that is what it said. And, and you, you may imagine why this is so simple, right? And what's the assumption there is that the main assumption is something technical we haven't said is uh, when we have infinite, when we cut it into infinite different pieces, this thing is still whole, okay? So this is the part that beyond the natural logic we can think. Okay, but this is required for our purpose. Okay, and um, uh, the first outcome from the axiom two and axiom three is what we call complement rule. Okay, because the whole is S, right? Is one, and you can cut into two parts, which is A and A complement. And A axiom three said probability of a whole can be uh, will be some of the parts, right? So some of the part will be A and A complement, okay? Then that's why the complement or by itself is just one minus the other part, okay? So that's the first rule. The second rule is, uh, again, the uh, more general case of axiom three, right? It's saying that uh, if the sample space, the probability is one and you cut it into different parts, some of all parts will be one, okay? So that's axiom two and three, so that's nothing where deep here. Um, and uh, okay, next one. Next one, the rule, this rule is also a uh, rather convenient rule and uh, it will be pretty useful rule, okay? Basically what we want is to define many, many rule uh, for the rest of this class, okay? And uh, this rule will be helpful to do some calculations, okay? Um, the first one is called addition rule, okay? So uh, we're talking about uh, both of them actually the same, okay, we're similar, but talking about how to calculate the union or the intercept, okay? If you have one of the art, okay? So the, the first thing you can see here is uh, um, the union, uh, sorry, the intercept, okay? Will be same, will be equal to two things, a plus B, okay? And do remember that if under the axiom free, if A and B are mutually exclusive, okay? Uh, sorry, this case, okay. If A and B mutually exclusive, this is zero, right? And, or you put in this, I mean, look at this one first. The A union B, sorry, look at this one. A union B will be A plus B, okay? If this is the case where they're mutual exclusive, okay? Actually mutual exclusive means that this is zero. Okay, so that's why it's very natural. But why it is abstract is, okay? Uh, 
the idea is same as what we see in the diagram. Uh, say in this case, okay. We have A, probably A, and probably B, okay. A union B will be just this uh, whole area, okay. If you're A and B, you double count the middle part. So that's why if A plus B subtract the middle part, okay. And go back to here. If you swap these two, you get the first equation. And how you get the first equation, uh, the meaning is intersect will be uh, summing all of them minus this one, right? How to understand from the uh, from diagram, right? So the intersect will be the pink one, okay? How to get the pink one is you get this big one and you add this one, okay? So you overlap this one and you take away uh, the blue and the uh, red one, so you get the overlap, okay? So that's the idea. So let me repeat this one. It's just saying that uh, when you talk about union and intersect, right? And the other way around is look at the union plus the intersect will be the sum, right? You move this to the other side. Okay, so that is an other way to look at it is because the union and the intercept, right, add up together is A and B together. So that's a fair way to look at it, but uh, but uh, we don't really need to too much worry too much about that. So let's see example. I think this example would be uh, and uh, easier to see. So consider the case that uh, we look at the probability that having even number or a big number, which is greater than three, okay? So how to proceed is to define A is an even number, uh, B is greater than three. So A is two, four, six, B is uh, four, five, six, okay? So A and B or A un intercept B will be uh, even number greater than three, okay? There is four and six, okay? So you can uh, easily check, right? Probably A is three over six, probably B is three over six because three of them, right? A intercept B on two of them is two over six, okay? And A union B will be sum of A and B, right? Three over six, three over six minus two over six, okay? That is four over six is two for, okay? So that would be the first way to do, okay? The other one is the direct ray, right? Greater than or even number greater than three will be four and six, okay? So just two, it's just two over six. Uh, sorry, it's again okay, union, right? So it's even number or greater than three, so it will be uh, even number will be two, three, two, two, four, five, six. So four of them. Union, right? Even number of greater than three will be two, four, five, six. Four numbers. Okay, that was that. So that's why four over six is two for. Okay. So this means that regardless of the route you're going, it's the same. And sometimes one way is easier, one way is easier. Same a complement rule. Okay. Here, uh, the direct way is easier. Okay. But uh, sometimes that uh, indirect is faster. So that's why we calculate probability in this way. Okay, um, so I think this is very trivial. Uh, the intercept is inside, right? It's clearly that uh, it's two over uh, six for the intercept, okay? Uh, the next one is uh, what we call the condition table. That is something often you collect on the data. That's what you said here, okay? So here we have uh, 80 students. Uh, we can classify, or actually, it's luckily, it's interesting that actually we have really have active students in the in my all section, session B and session E are all active students, and uh, we have a uh, male and female, okay, or and also we can see whether they pass the exam or fail the exam. I hope this is not the case in at the end of our semester, but uh, at least uh. 
uh, it is true that it's not true that male and the female are the same. And you, you would guess what is the male and female ratio uh, is uh, more female than male. Uh, and of course, we have more pass than fail, hopefully. Um, here, the, uh, actually, when you draw content table, actually, you have the uh, idea of mutual exclusive, okay? Because either you're male or female, right? And pass, pass and fail are all also mutual, mutual exclusive. And here, 15 actually means that uh, uh, the 15 of male that passed the exam, okay? So the question is how many male? Uh, look at this, 40 over 80, okay? And how many got passed? Uh, will be 35 over 80, okay? And how many male have passed? Okay, it's here, which is 15 over 80, okay? The next question is next trivial is, uh, what is the probability that either is male or pass? Okay. So you can use this one rule. Okay. So we just 0.5 plus 0 0.4375 uh, minus uh, 0 0.1875. Okay. 0.75. Okay. You can, because all calculated, you can directly. Okay. But also you can look at how many. Student actually male and pass, right? Male will be 15, 25, and those who also pass from the female will 20, okay? So add them up to 60, so also 60 of 80 is 0.75, okay? So it means that regardless of which row you're doing, you should get the same answer, okay? So I hope this, uh, you understand why uh, we need to use it, okay? Uh, Especially when this table is very big, then looking at this will be difficult, but looking at all this will be relatively easy, okay? Because you just look at the uh, ends and look at one entry and then subtract, rather than looking at the whole set, okay? So this is easier. Um, so I hope this is okay. So the, the further implication of uh, this rule, uh, this rule looks uh, relatively stupid, uh, and indeed, indeed, this rule is super useful, and this is a lot of time. This is being used for calculation. Okay, uh, but I, I, I doubt that we do a lot of this calculation. But this is actually very useful. Okay, and what is said is, uh, sometimes actually we call this is a partitioning. Okay, so to calculate for the a. Okay, sometimes this thing will be very difficult to do. Okay, but if you partition a sample space by B and B complement, and you look at A and B and A and the B intersect, sorry, B, B complement, and you do in this way, uh, your life is easier. Okay, let me see if I have an example. Oh, I don't have an example, but uh, unfortunately. Um, what is here is uh, the idea is uh, we have A here, okay? This is the, the blue one is the B, but our size is B complement. So that's why you can divide the A into A without B and A with B, okay? That's what it said, okay? A can be divided A with A and A without, A with B and A without B, okay? So uh, I'm sorry that we don't have a example for that. Uh, but uh, you will see that one will be, uh, we'll be using it actually later when we talk about the base. Okay. But, uh, but this uh, will be important. And in general, if you can divide, uh, uh, actually I should be, but to be consistent, but anyway, you can divide a sample space into many, many parts, right? Probably B will be uh, same as, B with A1, B with A2, B with A3, add up to all together, okay? And later you will see this is exactly the, what the base rule when you calculate, we need that, okay? So just wait patient for 20 minutes, then you will see what it is, okay? But this is uh, what we need for our purpose, okay? Is that okay?
But anyway, uh, it's not whether it's okay or not, it's a statement. So whether you understand the question for this statement, uh, but anyway, you, you will see, okay? And um, the next one is something uh, related to casino, okay? And we call odd ratio. And uh, this is something rather informal way to put probability, okay? So usually we talk about probability, but odd ratio is the way to express probability. And it's often used in the betting industry. So that's why we talk about that. And also the book talk about it, okay? So it is nothing, uh, odd ratio defined as favorite event A, okay? It just, you can imagine in favor of event A, you would imagine that it should be probability of A, okay? But beyond that, we would, just not just that we just have dy it normalize it by the complement of it okay does that repeat odd ratio is or odd for it it just the odd in favor of a just probably a over the complement of itself okay so uh, later we will see why we need that but uh but this is uh the definition is very simple okay so just an example uh, what is the odd, suppose rows are die, okay? What is the uh, odd in favor of number one, okay? Will be one six over one minus one six. So it's one six over one five six. So it's one two five. Okay. Nothing deep here, okay? And against will be just flipping the thing. Okay, just you reverse it against. So why we want to express this instead of the other way around, okay? So this is a special term use industry, okay? So when we talk about uh, a bet with all four to one, okay? Which means that you bet $1, you get $4, okay? If you win, of course you lose, you don't, you don't get anything, okay? So that is uh, the bet, okay? And um, so actually, when we talk about fair bet, okay? Fair bet means that uh, we don't mind being on the side. Or the, so either you you do the betting or you you do the you do the uh, one who did the other, right? No matter whether you win you get one dollar or you lose to get one dollar doesn't really matter we call fair bet okay and for fair bet here um the odd is actually in that case uh the odd is is the inverse of this okay so which means that let me give example it looks like com uh complicated okay let's return to the case we have row row a die okay and as we have a reset row a die got six right the odd is uh one to one to five okay so what would be a fair bet would be five one which means that you bet one dollar you should get five dollar okay that is a fair if not fair if you less than that is not fair right more than that then the casino is stupid Okay, so uh, that means that when you see the bed, when you look at, okay, uh, look at the, I'm not suggesting you do the horse race, I mean, betting the horse racing thing. I never do it, so I don't know. But you can see, uh, when it's, you see in the TV or in the website, they say, if you win, you win how much, right? Uh, there's, there's an odd ratio, right? Then, Actually, you can say this is the probability that people assign to that, right? Because the bet ratio is actually changing, right? And actually you can calculate based on the market, people think about the probability that which one would win, okay? Of course, you can see the sum of the probability is not even one uh, in the real casino or horse racing case because the casino need to earn some money. The sum of the odd, odd ratio is not one, but it's, uh, but it's close to one, okay? I mean, close to point nine something, uh, but uh, that 
that is what the odd ratio means. Okay. And in terms of horse racing, it's very big enough so it is close to the fair bet. If you take away the uh, uh, the mean fee for the uh, horse racing society, because there may be one betting on each horse, right? At the end, it would be uh, about probability, right? And you may ask why we care about horse racing betting, because uh, some people said uh, that's what the stock market is, right? Stock market is just like basically people beg on it, right? It's like reflecting everyone's idea on the future, uh, we say cash flow or future dividend earning of the company, right? And this is the uh, uh, idea, okay? So this is trying to, this several slides is basically talking about odd ratio, okay? And odd ratio is somewhat inverse of the odd ratio is the odd, okay? And what's odd is uh, something uh, you get, if you bet, this is what you get, okay? And if, they are, if the bet is fair, odd ratio and odd are actually uh, closely related, just inverse of each other, okay? Is that okay? Any question? Is that okay? Good. So now we go to uh, the most difficult part of this course is we define two things here, conditional probability and base rule, okay? So what is conditional probability? This is something that related to what we call learning, okay? And that is actually what the financial market is. Or we have, uh, we are having some data, that's with the data idea, okay? So what is this is we have the, we know the sample space, right? We know what's going on there, okay? But suppose uh, we know something had happened, okay? Then how does it change our judgment, okay? What does that mean? Uh, okay, consider, consider this case, okay? If a baby just born today, the expected life expectancy in Hong Kong is 80 something, okay? 80, 80 something. But I didn't tell you about his or her sex. If I tell you, is it boy or girl, then probably change this prediction, right? Given that he's a boy, he will be 79. Given that he's a girl, then it will be 82 to 83, okay? So you give some information, actually we change our idea, okay? Same as what we see in stock market, okay? Uh, probably everyone know Evergrande. I don't know if you know Evergrande. Hang Da Di Chan, Hang Dai Dai Chan. So it's the, the biggest uh, land developer in China and also the biggest land developer in the world. Okay, look at how much she own people is uh, is a is a two two uh, two thousand billion uh, dollar. Okay, but anyway, it's something that uh, one fourth of uh, uh, the government revenue of Chinese uh, central government. But anyway, the thing is like um, you can see the stock market. Uh, about the price of Evergrande, right? It's not an instant drop, but it's gradually dropping from early this year to now, right? And if you notice that it's like every day without news, then things keep fluctuating. But suddenly there's a big news like uh, these days they say, okay, they cannot repay their debt. Then the price drop like, huge, right? And the idea is like some information, update our belief, and after update our idea, the thinking, then things changes, the probability, okay? So that's conditional. With the knowing, we don't know, right? But with knowing something, then we start to think that things may get worse, right? So that's why update. 
right? So uh, this idea, so uh, this is very useful in the financial market. When you look at the finance modeling, basically this is uh, basically what it is, okay? And uh, a lot of trading algorithm is based on this, right? You just keep trading and then you just look at the market activity and you update and then you further trade. Right, say what is technical analysis? Okay, technical analysis is looking at the price history, right? Look at the price movement, right? And the price movement actually tell you something, right? So that is constant property. Right? When you see, you believe that when there are more recently there's a lot of buy, then you believe that that is going to be good news behind. So that's how you update. Okay, whether this update makes sense or not is another issue, but this is how uh, this being done. Okay, so. So now let's go to the definition. We start to define what is conditional probability, okay? It's talking about probability A, okay? And if we know B has happened, okay? We don't know why B happened, but we have some knowledge that confirm us B has happened, okay? Then what's probability A, okay? And probability A given B will be A intercept B, over B, okay? Now, why you have this formula, okay? The first thing is, look at the numerator. I don't think you will complain because you know B has happened, okay? What only relevant to you is A intercept B, right? Because only B is true. Anything outside B is not feasible, okay? And why you have to divide it by probably B, the reason is you know B is what, it, what we know is already happened. You know it has happened, right? So that means that uh, only anything B is relevant. So if A is equal to B, right? Then it should be one, right? Satisfy our axiom two. So that's why you have to divide them to normalize everything between zero to one. So that's the idea, okay? To repeat, if you don't want to follow, basically this is normalization constant. Make sure that uh, everything is within inside must be one, okay? So um, just to repeat, because it's so important concept, I want to make sure that everyone is following. So why, what is this notation is, we're asking, suppose we know B has happened, okay? How we know some data, okay? And we know B has happened. What's for the A? Okay. And actually, we all want to ask for B A would happen, right? But since we know B has happened, so it must be inside here. Okay. B intercept B complement will be zero because B has happened already. So that one cannot be true. Okay. Numerator is not an issue, but denominator, denominator is probably B. Uh, reason why we're going to divide that because we only want everything inside B is true, okay? So everything inside B whole sum up must be one, okay? So you must be divided to normalize everything. Okay, so that is a normalization idea. But uh, soon you will realize that why this is the case, okay? But let's see the example here, okay? Roy Dai, okay? Even is two, four, six, large is four, five, six, okay? And uh, even intercept large will be four and six. I guess that's not an issue. Now, suppose we know the outcome is large, okay? Maybe someone told me there's a large. Or how can we know the large? But anyway, just somehow we know it's large, okay? And then what is probably E has occurred, right? So it's, Large is there, so it must be four, five, six. So one, two, three is actually irrelevant, okay? Actually, you can imagine that we have a sample space is only four, five, six, okay? And in that case, what is relevant E here? Only four and six, because two is, you know, only large has happened. Two is not relevant, right? So only the new E is only four and six, okay? So that's why probability that E given L will be just two, 
over three, right? So that is what it means here, okay? You can do it in this way. You can strengthen the sample size and do all the calculation again, okay? But the easiest way to do it is to apply the formula directly, okay? Is the intercept of two, which is two or six, because intercept of two is four and six is two or six, okay? Only four and six. And L would be just three of them is three over six. And six and six eliminate is two over three, okay? So the idea here is that suppose large number, you know, we know it, how likely is an even number is uh, two over two third, okay? So one third would be odd, one third, two third will be even, okay? So uh, later you will see why we care about this, but uh, you can look at the diagram here is before is one up to six, but now we know large has happened. So what is left is this one, okay? So you're asking what is even, so it's two over three, okay? So that is the underlying idea, okay? Now, if you understand this, uh, we'll have uh, a quick example here. If A is this, B is this, a intercept B is this was A uh, given B, just apply directly, it's 0.6, okay? So that's nothing but just uh, give you the uh, simplest thing you can do, it's 0.6, okay? So the next thing we will do is nothing, but just, we just manipulate this formula. We just multiply this, both sides, okay? So it means that the intercept will be the conditional uh, times what you condition it on, okay? So that is the uh, multiplication rule here, okay? Probability A and B will probably A given B times probability B. Probability or B given A times A, okay? So you ask, okay, why we care about all this, okay? Again, uh, this will be useful when even A and B sometime, very often is a uh, overtime thing, okay? Say maybe A is uh, what happened in the, in the first period, B is what happened in the second period, okay? So then that's why you want to say what happened in the first period and condition what happened in the first period or second period, okay? So this thing will be much easier, okay? Although now it looks abstract, but uh, look at the example, then you will see what happened, okay? So this is a classical example. Uh, if earn of uh, three black and three white balls, okay? There's total six balls there, okay? Now what we're gonna do is you're going to draw two balls from the urn, okay? If you draw with replacement, then it's nothing, but just repeating what we're doing, right? We know how to do it. But now consider the case where we draw it with the putting it back, okay? We draw two balls, okay? Simultaneously from the urn. And of course you can list out everything there, right? You can have five balls again, uh, 25 outcomes, okay? That's no problem. Okay, but can we do it much quicker? Okay, now the question is asking is, what is both ball are black? Okay, so that means that you want to define the following. A is the first ball is black, B is second ball is black, you're asking A and B, okay? And the first ball is black, it's very simple, six balls, right? You draw one of them. The first ball is random, right? Half of the chance, right? Three of, a field of six, right? Half the chance. The second one is more complicated, okay? Is the second ball is black, given the first ball is also black, okay? Now you remember you have six balls, 
Suppose the first one is black. Then what you left is two black and three white. Okay. So what's the black here will be five balls. You already have out one black. So only two black. So it's two over five. So it's two fifth. So this is how two fifth is. Let me repeat this statement. Okay. You have six balls and you already take out one black already. So you only have three white and two black. What is probability that you get the black from this five balls? Okay. Two black out of all five balls. So it's two over five. Okay. So in that case, asking using multiplication rule is first black, second black is you draw the first back, which is one half. Okay. Given the first one is black, the second is also black is two over five. Okay. So it's one fifth. Okay. So this is uh, 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 rather, use, rather useful. Not now, but you can imagine that you are doing quality control. You are doing many, many things. Uh, that is something you do, right? You just do auditing. You just pick up things. Uh, that is how you uh, understand what's the probability here and there. And finance also the case, right? Because everything is like uh, things are separate by time. In finance, time is important, right? So you are talking about probability that say, what's the probability that the price will go up for 10 days, so and so forth, right? So that is the idea behind. Is that okay here? Okay. Now, the next one, I know there are a lot of stuff here, but uh, I guess most of you have learned it, so just a little bit quicker. So this one is called the independence, okay? Which is something very intuitive. Or A given B is same as A. So whether you know B has happened has no change of our, our judgment. So they're independent. For B given A, is same as B. That means that knowing whether A happened have, doesn't change whether A then they're independent. Okay. And other way around is the intercept is same as the product. Okay. Three of them are the same. You just need to show one of them. Okay. If we can prove, but I'm not going to prove it. It's very simple proof. Three of them are equivalent. Knowing one, you know the other. Okay. So, uh, why you care about that? Because uh, why you care about this? Actually, there's people are arguing this. A is whether you get COVID. B is whether you have a vaccine, right? People argue whether the vaccine matter. Or B is whether you have the mask. That's what the US people are arguing, right? B. Uh, you also look at the case where B, suppose you look at this sample of uh, people who take the vaccine, okay? You can ask uh, whether taking one jab or two jab matter or how many different, that is how you look at it, right? Look at the data and then you can estimate those. But this is what we care, right? Because from the data, you can estimate probability, right? Because go back to the very beginning, right? Probability is what? Lawman frequency, right? If you have large number of data, the probability can be there, right? From data, you can see whether they're independent, right? But this is the simple way to think about it. But of course, to do it formally, we have to talk at, look at this at the second half of our, our course. But intuitively, from the data, you can estimate the probability. You can verify it. Okay? Um, so the example is the following, okay? Suppose, as I said, A is what, B is what, and A, B is what, right? Then you can see whether A and B are related. Just multiply if it's the same. If not, yes or no, then you can see. Okay. So this is something I think is very useful. And uh, right. And sometimes you also care A and B like a lot of health, right? Whether you sleep, have enough sleep can affect your health or GPA, right? And sometimes people worry about whether uh, you have a boyfriend or girlfriend in high school affect your study, I mean, there's many things, right? People would care, right? So uh, 
so on and so forth. Okay, so that is a, when you multiply, right? This is not same as this one, so they are not independent. Okay, so it's, it's rather simple. I'm not going to prove it. Um, so before we end, let me introduce the last, almost maybe last thing, uh, phase theorem. Of course, we'll talk about more in the next class, but I want to talk about this because this is the single most important thing in this class, I would say, okay? It's called Bayes' theorem. And this is what I said about learning, okay? And updating, how you update or how you learn, okay? And um, you can see, let's see this uh, thing. Uh, we have to define two things, what's called prior and posterior, okay? And uh, just by definition, uh, prior posterior just basically no different, but just swapping the condition, okay? You may ask what it is. It looks something magical or mathematical or confusing, right? Because B and A and B, A, B is just notation, okay? So what is there, okay? Look at this, this theorem set, okay? Suppose we know B had happened, so that's why B must be positive, okay? So it's, this is trivial, okay? So the question is, B given A, okay, can be written as the following, okay? If written as a into a probably b given a times a over probably b, okay? If it says nothing, right? Because this is the multiplication rule is a and b, right? There's nothing this comes from already, okay? Why this is so important, okay? There's nothing new here. Just to repeat, what's based rule here is this, right? B given a, then with the b, this is a and b, right? This is coming from multiplication rule, it's just A and B, okay? And you write in this way, why they call base rule, right? So why base got the credit for this, okay? So why is it so important? Um, I'm not gonna prove it. Uh, let's see this example. I think this is the most common example, okay? And this is you most used in the uh, medical test. After this, we'll end today, okay? So consider, uh, I made this example with don't knowing COVID, okay? It's like a long time back. So we have 40% uh, of population infected in certain disease, okay? And the question is we have a test whether you have a disease and 80% of them is correct, okay? And 40% is false positive, okay? False positive means that even if you don't have disease, you appear positive. So pay a guy, okay? which is, has no disease. You test it, okay? Uh, turn out to be 40% of them actually still said it's positive, okay? It's no accurate test, okay? So the question is, now there's a guy who actually got positive test outcome, okay? We want to know how likely that he got a, he got a disease, right? Why we care about this? Because we want to see whether we send him to Penny Bay, right? Or make him stay at home for 21 days, right? It's important decision. Okay, so let's do the following. Uh, event A is the test positive and event B is affected. Okay. Then from the data, we know that the uh, population, we know we can guess this is 40% are infected. So this is 40%, uh, okay. And given he's infected, he will show positive is pointed because the test is 40% accurate. So if you have disease, 80% of time will be accurate, okay? And that means the other one is if you are not affected, it's still positive, it's 0.4. That is what we mean by the false positive, okay? And the question is again asking, what is B given A, okay? Given though, given you have disease, so given your test positive, what have disease, okay? So now do you know that we are going to swap this A, B, and B, A, okay? We know from the data, our knowledge is if infected, okay? You will see positive test outcome with poverty 0.8, okay? Now we're going to swap it. Now we see the other one. Look at a specific thing, specific subject that tell us T has positive test outcome was likely that he has the disease, okay? Okay, that is a lot of time we do, right? 
just like in the finance, we know a lot of time when the price of US stock market goes up, right? Hong Kong stock market usually tend to go up, right? So on and so forth, right? You update ourselves. Okay, very quickly. Uh, I don't want to take more time. So how to calculate this? Use complement rule. B and B complement, just subtract from each other. It's 0. 0.6, okay? And then we can tell about the A, okay? Which we use the uh, total property rule, okay? A intercept B and A intercept B complement, okay? And we use the uh, multiplication rule, A in given B times uh, B, okay? A given B complement times B complement, okay? And all the numbers above, just plug in, okay? And then we use the base theorem, okay? Uh, this number been calculated, everything is there. To turn out that uh, is 0.5714, okay? So everything is straightforward here. But what we want to say is, okay, this test is not very accurate, okay? Although it looks very accurate, 80% is good and 40% is bad. Actually, we can increase this a lot. We can decrease this a lot. Still, they actually, this number doesn't change a lot, okay? So it means that when we have a, a lot of false positive, and indeed your test will be very inaccurate, okay? But we didn't do it here, but you can try go home and see if you change some number, and that will be, uh, it's unlikely. So that's why, that's why in Hong Kong uh, government they're doing, you need to test many, many times, okay? So when people come in, they have to take a test six to seven times before they can release to the gen to digital society. Okay, but anyway, uh, don't worry, we will we just done today. So I don't want to take more time. So let's see, because some more of you have to get to the bus. Okay, so see you next, uh, next week. Enjoy the mid autumn festival. There's no class on Wednesday. Bye 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 bye. Enjoy, enjoy the uh, weekend and the mooncake. Okay, bye bye. Thank you.